welcome back to our class don't forget to subscribe if it is your first time to visit our channel that's this exchange in uh, in 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 lungs at alveoli i try to explain this but what happens the blood you see it, it comes when it has no oxygen it has a lot of carbon dioxide and then when it reaches here that's this exchange takes place and then by the time it leaves the alveolus the blood has um, enough um, oxygen so we are saying that the air entering the alveoli after inhalation has a high concentration of oxygen so this is the alveoli if it's once alveolus if there are many we call them alveoli so this air which comes in it has a high concentration of oxygen you see it it is going in it has high concentration of oxygen and then compared to the blood of the surrounding capillaries compared to this blood which is uh, surrounding the alveolus then they are saying that the inhalation the inhaled air has a lower uh, carbon dioxide it has less carbon dioxide therefore carbon dioxide cannot go in through diffusion remember diffusion is the movement of molecules from a region of high concentration the region of low concentration high concentration of oxygen low concentration of oxygen in the blood high concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood and then low concentration of carbon dioxide in the lungs so now diffusion must take the uh, the gradient the concentration gradient so we are saying that um, this results in oxygen diffusing or moving from the alveoli into the blood and the carbon dioxide diffusing from the blood back to the alveoli. Then too much concentration inside the lung, then to the blood is less concentration. So diffusion will take in that direction. And too much carbon dioxide in the uh, uh, capillaries and less carbon dioxide in the lungs. And then uh, the, the direction is going to be that way. And then gaseous exchange takes place in that um more, a more detailed structure of, of, of alveolus. So this is how it looks like. The blood with high carbon dioxide concentration and low oxygen concentration, it comes, when it comes, carbon dioxide will diffuse into the uh, this space of alveolus, alveolus. And then the red blood cell will release this carbon dioxide into this space. And then oxygen, this air which is coming in, will have a large amount of oxygen or high concentration of oxygen. And then oxygen will diffuse into the red blood cells and then it will continue like that. So when it reaches the tissue, the cells will have a high concentration of, of, of carbon dioxide. Respiration has taken place there. So what happens? If there is high concentration of carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide moves out of the cells into the blood. So carbon dioxide from these cells will move out and then joins the blood. You see the blood? Uh, carbon dioxide moves out of the cells into the blood and then it is transported back to the heart, to the lungs where it is exhaled. So uh, carbon dioxide, because it has a high concentration in the cells due to respiration has taken place then what happens this carbon dioxide will um will join the blood uh, vessels um the blood will have a large amount of oxygen oxygen will diffuse into these cells oxygen will go into the cells to cut out respiration and then the product of respiration is carbon dioxide therefore the cells will have high amount of carbon dioxide so if carbon dioxide is too much, then it is going to diffuse into the blood and then it's taken back to the lungs. Or it's taken back to the heart and then the heart pumps it to the lungs and it's where it is exhaled out of the, out of the body. Um, so this is a small mechanism. Yes, we can also bring this small mechanism. You have the atmosphere. You have, this is the general uh, expression or uh, explanation of all what you have tried to cover. You have the atmosphere, you have the lungs, and then you have the blood, then you have the cells. So atmosphere, air from the atmosphere goes to the lungs, goes to the blood, goes to the cells. So what happens? So when you, during inhalation, air is dragged into the lungs. And then which air is being dragged in? Carbon, uh, oxygen is taken into from the lungs to the blood through diffusion. And then um, oxygen is taken from the blood vessel to the cells, still through the effusion to carry out uh, respiration. So how do we call this, this uh, process? So we call this process gaseous exchange. It takes place as a result of gaseous exchange. 
from there now uh because we have a lot of carbon dioxide in the cells as a result of respiration yes then carbon dioxide is taken to the blood and then the this process is as a result of cellular respiration and then carbon dioxide from the blood is taken to the lungs after that uh from the lungs then takes back to atmosphere this process is what called exhalation so basically this is the root how this um, air is being saturated in and out of the body. Breathing in and this is breathing out. So this is gaseous exchange and then this is a respiration. So remember, we, we try to define what is a respiration, what's gaseous exchange and what is a breathing. So this is breathing, this is gaseous exchange and then this is a respiration. Uh, lastly, this is the last part of it, homeostatic control of breathing. Uh, it means that how do we bring the gases to the balance without having too much or without having too less. In most cases, we talk about carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is not needed in the body. So we have some sense or some receptors which detect that so that carbon dioxide is removed out of the body. So carbon dioxide level in the blood increases above normal. So what happens? The receptor cells in the carotid artery uh, in the neck are stimulated. So you have the, the heart, yes? The, this, this, this blood, once the blood is having too much carbon dioxide passing the heart, this carotid artery is going to send the impulse, sends the impulse to the brain. So we are saying that um, this heart is going to detect uh, that uh, increase in carbon dioxide because now the blood is acidic. It becomes acidic. What is going to help the heart detect is the cardiac arteries. This cardiac artery is going to send the impulse, sends the impulse to the brain. So we are saying that the receptor in the cardiac artery in the neck are stimulated. When they are stimulated, the cells send impulse to the medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata uh, is here. Yes, medulla oblongata. Uh, which stimulates the breathing muscles, uh, that is the intercostal muscles and diaphragm, and the heart, what happens? This, it sends back the message to these muscles and to the heart so that now they can contract. When they contract, now it means that carbon dioxide is exhaled out of the body or out of the lungs, and this, this heart is going to pump so fast so that now the, the, the blood is being sent to the lungs and then the lungs is going to breathe in and out at a very fast rate and then the carbon dioxide is going to be exhaled out of the body. So we are saying that breathing muscles contract, uh, increasing the rate, that's the rate, like breathing very fast and the depth, meaning that you are taking too, like you are taking it too deep. Yes, so that you, you grab a lot of air uh, from um, atmosphere into the lungs and then exhaling a lot of air from the lungs to the atmosphere. The heartbeat becomes faster. Why? So that you can push more blood to the lungs. More carbon dioxide is taken to and then uh, exhaled from the lungs. It's taken to the lungs and then exhaled from the lungs and then carbon dioxide levels goes back to normal so that's why it's called homeostasis keeping the internal environment constant basically uh, that's it uh, that's what you need to know about this class uh, tomorrow you'll be right